Hello and good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're joining us from and welcome to the DXBPE PE at Home webinar. Um, DXBPE is the professional development branch of DASA and DASA is the Dubai Affiliated School Sports Association here in Dubai representing 81 schools. Uh, you can follow DXBPE to find out about these events and other professional development opportunities through Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Um, we'll also upload a recording of this webinar to our YouTube channel. So just type in DXBPE and you'll find us. Um, saying that we are affiliated with DASA, these events are for absolutely everyone and you're all very, very welcome wherever you're joining us from. Um, so first of all, thank you for joining us and supporting um, this movement of professional development for PE teachers by PE teachers, which is what we're all about. So um, to kick things off, I'm just gonna put up a poll for you all to vote on and tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, um, so it's just two questions to let us know where in the world you're from and how many weeks you've been teaching uh, PE online, or in fact, even if you've gone back to school already. So we'll come back to that poll in a few moments. So um, this webinar is part, of, uh, is part five of a series of webinars. So far in the last five, uh, last four, sorry, we've had 950 teachers um, from all over the world join us. Um, and today's a special day because we have blasted through the 1000 mark with um, something like 800 of you registering. Um, currently we have about 300 odd online. Um, so it's a personal record for DXBPE and DASA. So I just want everyone to take a moment to think about that, that there's over a thousand PE teachers coming together, sharing, learning from each other, um, just passionate educators really, and they've got very fortunate students if you're their teacher. So thank you very much. Um, if you're on Twitter um, and you have a professional account and you see something you like or, or hear today, um, please tweet about it and uh, use the hashtag DXBPE and hashtag Fizzed, P H Y S E D. That way we can um, start a conversation and come back to it later and stay connected through Twitter. So, uh, what you can expect from this webinar. Here in Dubai, we've been delivering PE online for six weeks now, and we know we've got another nine to go. It's quite a daunting task, but in some ways, we were quite fortunate because we knew we had 15 weeks of online PE from the very start. We were told that. So, as such, our um, thinking and planning has always been of a long-term basis. With 250 private schools in Dubai, there's plenty of competition for student places um, as well as between PE departments, um, but we're very collaborative. Um, and we also have that parental pressure and expectation with being fee-paying schools. So this really drives standards and provision. And the reason I say that is because I feel that gives the presenters today value in what they're telling you because that, this is the position they're coming from. Um, so the presentations themselves will be very similar to almost a teach meet format um, they'll be between five to seven minutes each. Um, lots of them are ideas and concepts designed to inspire you to take them back to wherever you are in your context and try and improve your provision for your students. So the webinar will take uh, hopefully an hour, might be a little bit more. It's all recorded and shared. Um, some of the things you can expect, uh, some top tips, what we used to do but we don't do anymore. Um, quality control and non-negotiables for online PE lessons. Uh, YouTube channels and how to create great content for them. How to use Seesaw through Google, uh, that many of you may do. Um, going live through Microsoft Teams. Uh, virtual fixtures, hosting a virtual Olympics. Um, something called the MyMove app, which is quite exciting. And finally, to give you a little bit of an incentive to stay with us for the full hour, at the end there will be some discount, discount codes and website resources shared that you will find extremely useful. So that's to keep you here for the whole hour. Um, before I introduce the panelists, you will notice on your Zoom account that there is a Q&A section. This is really important for your engagement with the webinar and for us to be able to help you. Please use the Q&A section to ask your questions, um, but also if you see a question that you like, vote for it. Give it a thumbs up, up a vote to that question. 
and this will move that question up to the top of the pile. That way, at the end, when we have our Q&A session, we will answer the questions with the most votes first. Okay, so please don't ask questions in the chat or directly to panelists. Please post it in the Q&A section. You might find panelists answer your questions directly by typing, but mainly we're going to answer them in the Q&A section. So first, I'm going to introduce the panelists. So I'm going to head over to Matt, please, first. Everyone, I'm Matt Thomas. I'm the Teaching and Learning Coordinator at Gems Lantern Academy Silicon Oasis and a CPD Coordinator for the TalalP Network. Thank you, Matt. And Lara, please. Hi, I'm Lara Bates. I'm the Assessment and Progression Coordinator for Wellington, Wellington Silicon Oasis. Uh, I can't even talk. Wellington Academy Silicon Oasis. So the same department as Matt. Thank you, Lara. And Johnny? Hi, I'm Johnny. I'm a primary school PE teacher from Horizon English School and also lead tutor over at uh, thepetutor.com as well. Thank you, Johnny. And Claire, please. Hi, I'm Claire Noland. I'm the curriculum leader of PE at Gems Wellington International School. Thanks, Claire. And Jay? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is James Bedford and I'm the director of sport at King's School, Arbarsha. And finally, Becky. Hi, I'm a primary and secondary PE teacher at NAS Dubai. I'm also the whole school coordinator for all of our after school activities when they're running. Thanks, Becky. Um, and I'm going to introduce myself. My name's Ed Mosley. I'm uh, head of PE at North London Collegiate School, Dubai and I'm the DXBP Professional Development Coordinator. Um, all these guys here today, we are not professional webinar hosts or anything like that. We're just PE teachers, just like you, um, just sharing what we're doing in the hope that it might help somebody. So um, we hope that will happen today. So I'm just gonna end the poll that I posted earlier so you'll all be able to see the results there. Um, we can see that we've got uh, 52 of you from the UK, over 100 from the UAE. Hello, guys. Welcome. Um, Asia is in the lead today. 112 people from Asia. Welcome. Um, and we hope we can, we've got every continent, I think, bar South America represented. So that is brilliant. Um, really powerful stuff. Um, now, we are going to begin. Um, and I'm going to head over to our first presenters, um, Matt, Lara, and Becky. We'll start with Matt first on top tips. What we used to do, we don't do anymore. Thanks, Ed. I used to film in portrait mode, but Lara taught me to always film in landscape so you don't get those bars on the screen. Um, so one of the things that we discussed at the start was that we initially in primary were leading things through PowerPoint um, with lots of links and clips embedded into the PowerPoint and we just realised straight off the bat it was going to be really complicated for our students. So we decided very quickly just to move straight into full YouTube videos and Matt's going to explain how he's set that up a little bit later. Okay, so NAS Dubai Primary, um, they focus mainly on seesaw challenges and um, a, a little content every day. They've moved towards live lessons as well as still being supported in seesaw. Secondary, we were on PowerPoints, which then developed into mo uh, movies or recordings of those PowerPoints. And now we are in live events. For having been in live meetings, we're now live events. So that's been our progression through so far. Excellent. Thanks, guys. And an important thing for everyone, I think, if you're just starting out in your online learning for PE, a big thing was initially we used other YouTube content created by other people like Joe Wicks and other professionals. But we quickly realized that the PE teacher on camera, whether it's pre-recorded or live, is the most powerful way to go. And it's the way you will end up going, guaranteed, because otherwise the participation rate just drops off. So that is a big tip for us. Um, Someone's asked about uh, the hashtags, uh, hashtag DXBPE and hashtag PHYSED if you're using Twitter. Okay, um, Lara, over to you please on non-negotiables for online PE. So like I said, we went to YouTube videos pretty, really quickly. I think we actually prepared PowerPoints in week one and then before they even went um, got, uh, delivered, we then quickly moved to our YouTube videos. So um, Matt's going to show you how we set up the YouTube page. 
I'm going to show you a little bit more about how we structure the, um, the lessons. So I'm just going to quickly share my screen with you. What we did was, um, as a department, we came together and we decided on what was what we discussed as non-negotiables. So things that need to be covered in every single lesson. Um, just a couple of things that I just want to bring your attention to. So competencies is something that we cover in, um, in our lessons anyway. It's something that we run as a school, as a primary school. So this wasn't something that was just put in for the sake of um, online learning. So this was what we came up with in terms of um, what we want to be putting in in every single lesson. What we've, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly share some examples of those. Oh, hang on a second. Share some examples of those. So, for example, our introduction would look something like this. Salam alaikum, year six. I hope you're all keeping safe and keeping well, and Ramadan Mubarak to you all. Now, we're going to be starting a new unit today. We're going to be doing some gymnastics, and then we're going to incorporate that later on into some cheerleading. Woo! Go Falcons! So, we tend to try and keep our introductions really short um, and get them as active as quickly as possible. Then what we also try and incorporate each week is not only to keep the kids active, but then also to expand their knowledge and we include some questioning as well. Now, the main focus of this lesson is body tension. So what I would like you to do now is once you have uploaded your own routine onto Seesaw, I would love to see if you can go and comment on a friend's Seesaw post about their body tension. So um, these simple symbols in the top corner, so CFU is our checking for understanding, so it's what the students would see as a sort of stimulus to go, right, I need to be answering questions or I need to be engaging in some other way um, just to keep their brains ticking over as well. And this is an example of one of our competency symbols. So I would put that in the corner just to get the students to realise that that would be a competency they're working on and they're very familiar with these symbols as well. So another example of questioning. Just a second. These three. Okay, guys. So at the start of the lesson, I shared our success criteria with you. Now let's see if we can engage our brains and answer those questions and see where we're at. Are you at one star, two star, or three star? Number one. Can you tell me what strength training is and what it looks like? Number two, can you explain the effects that strength training would have on your body? And number three, think about the training that we have just done. If someone was, say, finding this, the training a little bit too difficult, how would you adapt what we did to make it accessible for them? And then on the flip side of things, if someone was finding it too easy, how would you adapt it to make it more challenging for them? work everyone I have one final extension challenge for you in a moment I am going to share a picture with some blank labels to it they are identifying the four main muscle groups that are in our legs as a challenge if you want to do it what I would like you to do is I would like you to use the blue boxes to label the major muscle groups in our legs you guys should already know this so it should be very very easy for you as an extra challenge, underneath three of those boxes, there is a white box with some numbers in them. Now, the groups of muscles, they are not just a single muscle. They are made up of lots of different muscles. So say, for example, in one muscle group in our legs, there are three separate muscles that all work together to create the same movement. What I would like you to do is I would like you to see as an extra, extra challenge, if you can identify what those specific muscles are within that muscle group. tend to do there that's obviously an example of a year six lesson so obviously the knowledge content is going to be a lot higher but this filters all the way down to fs we are asking them questions we're asking them to engage not only physically but mentally as well and what would happen is the staff would film their videos um a week prior to when they go live we send them to um matt who then coordinates all the youtube pages but before they go up they're then quality assured by either myself matt um, another member of our leadership team or our head of department and I'll just quickly share how the um, how we then fill out that form so then what we do um, is then go through the form and say whether they first of all got the non-negotiables or not 
Um, as you can see here, this one didn't have a cool down. However, in the video, um, the teacher stated that the video is already quite long. So he then prompted the students to go back. So it's just acknowledging what the teacher has done and then also adding some comments on how to maybe make it a little bit more cohesive or improve it for next week. So yeah, that's pretty much how we structure our lessons and quality assure our lessons. And then Matt's gonna show you a little bit more on how he structures the YouTube page and runs that. Over to you, Matt. Thanks, Ed. I'm here today to walk you through a zero equipment based fitness activity. All you and your students will need is a Wi Fi connection, an up to date device, and an open mind. I'll just share my screen now, and this is Ready Player of USL. This is Ready Player WSO. It's a series of brain breaks and workouts to help children relieve their stress and refocus their attention. As you can see, all these brain breaks start life as specific seesaw activities. If I click on the boxing VR video, for example, it will send you to our school's primary YouTube page. If I then go full screen and then go all the way to the middle, you'll see the two reasons why this has been so successful. Number one, is a walkthrough of a famous video game. The other is that there is a pre-recorded member of staff simultaneously playing along. Now these hooks are key to increase participation and evidence submission. On that, if I pause the video and go straight to the seesaw activity on the DXBP page, you can see a selection of children's work. Now, as you can see, a smart TV is their preferred choice, but the children have also been using their iPads, laptops, and even a green screen. In the email that will follow this webinar, I've designed a step-by-step -step guide and a list of apps I use when editing the videos. My Twitter handle is on the form at the bottom of this page. It's at MATHOMASP. So feel free to contact me if you need any help or you'd like to showcase your work. Finally, I must stress that this Ready Players WSO format should not be a replacement for high quality PE, but instead an added extra in the lives of these children and families during these uncertain times. Thank you and back to you, Ed. Thank you very much, WSO. Um, great example there of stretching and challenging students academically in the primary school with all that muscle name content. And also, I really want to have a go at that Ready Player WSO. Check out their YouTube channel. I posted it in the um, chat. Um, there'll be lots of inspiration on you, for you guys in there if you have a look around. Um, right, next we have uh, Johnny from Horizon English School. Johnny is going to talk about how they're using Seesaw. Perfect. Cheers, Ed. Oh uh, yeah, like, like, like Ed just said, I'm, I'm Johnny from Horizon English School, Dubai. Um, and here today to share a little bit about how we're managing to incorporate some assessment for learning in practical PE during home learning and increase attention retention during lesson videos. So when home learning was announced about nine weeks ago, we knew we wanted or we knew what we wanted to avoid, which was sharing those generic fitness links, circuits, drills, etc. Uh, we wanted to teach the same units that the students would have been covering in school, developing their critical thinking and a wider range of motor skills. So in essence, we didn't want to drop the education part of PE just because of the situation. So what we needed was a way to share our own video demonstrations of learning activities, a medium through which the students could then share their recorded responses to the lesson for us to then review and then feedback on. And Seesaw was the, was the web platform well, that we found as the solution. And in its own words, on its own website, it's a powerful learning loop. And it's a platform in which teachers can post lessons through slides, links, videos, voice, picture. The students can then respond to those through annotation, voice, filming, pictures. And the teacher can then reply to those student responses through written and audio form, to which the student can then respond back to again and again and again. So my point being, is that Seesaw can open up this dialogue between the student and the teacher, promoting that assessment for learning and the constructive teacher feedback that really does drive student progress. So our approach has been to set one 40 to 60 minute PE lesson per week, per year group, with the expectation of student responses being made within the week. Now each lesson contains the relevant instructions, demonstrations, equipment lists, differentiation, but probably most importantly, is it has the details on what the student then needs to do to film and upload onto their seesaw page which the teacher 
can then access and, and review. So this could range from their favorite section, their hardest activity or a beat the teacher challenge. But once uploaded, it's the teacher's role to then feedback with tips, differentiation or an additional challenge. So the students can then take this feedback, act on it and then upload a response to that latest round of feedback. And that process can be repeated again and again, if need be. So this loop can continue as long as us as teachers are setting them a response challenge. So then when we are happy with the progress that they've made and the corrections that they've made, we can then leave the appropriate praise and, and leave it to that. But what's been fantastic is that this feedback loops are now happening concurrently with the latest PE lesson. So a student can be getting feedback and improving their skill from a lesson that was shared three weeks ago while also completing the PE lesson from this week. Now this plan do review process that has emerged over the last seven weeks has allowed us to change how we plan. So initially the lessons entailed slides, pictures, multiple videos, a lot of explanations. It was a very busy presentation. But now, because we've got a bank of student responses saved inside the Seesaw platform, we can start to include examples of successful work to showcase to the rest of the year group. And we can also pick up on common errors that everyone in our PE team has been commenting on and addressing those in, in the next lesson. Both of which can create an environment much like in school, where there's that constant thread of learning from one lesson to the next, opposed to just recording a standalone lesson, sending it in and out to the ether or online, and not knowing how the students are responding it. So a second big change we made was how we actually produced our lessons in the Seesaw platform. We analyzed our view counts on our YouTube page and the average duration of viewing it, it was starting to drop off after the first lesson that we uploaded and parental feedback was also coming in saying it was quite confusing, distracting uh, for students to switch back and forth from one lesson into another video, into a list of instructions. It was all quite confusing. So by using Google Slides, embedded YouTube videos and a little bit of iMovie, we've been able to produce the same style of lessons with warm up activities, challenge, extension, and then sort of a competition phase at the end. But we've been able to retain student attention and avoid safeguarding issues. And there's even less parental input required for, well, for the younger students. So we have a P department YouTube channel that acts as a video library for all of the lesson activities that we produce. We then stitch these together in iMovie with adequate instructions, voiceovers, rest periods. So that once a student does click that lesson from within Seesaw, it's then a completely hands-off approach and the student can complete the whole 40 to 60 minute lesson free from other videos distracting them on YouTube or the possibility of them engaging with other people in the comment sections. Now, not enough time to go into the real details on here about how to actually embed those videos, but at the end of this, you will get the resource list um, and there is a, a five, 10 minute video that you can go through that shows exactly how to achieve a similar one-click lesson for your department to use through Seesaw. So yeah, that was a quick hop, step, jump through how we've used it. Uh, any questions, then leave them in the chat box or the Q&A and I can help get back to them. But yeah, thanks for listening. Back to you, Ed. Thanks very much, Johnny. Yeah, um, Johnny creates some great videos, guys. So and um, like you said, we will send out a tutorial, basically how to do everything he's just gone through. So you can do that at your own pace. And uh, before we move on to um, Becky next, who's talking about going live at Nord Anglia School, just a reminder for everyone to use the Q&A. Thank you for those of you that are voting. Uh, that's working really well already. We can see popular questions that we can come to later on. And um, a big welcome to all the people from the Philippines that are loving the chat. It's great to have you guys with us. Um, right, so uh, we are gonna go to Becky now and uh, Becky's gonna be talking about going live in PE. Okay, thanks Ed. So um, we started off at uh, NAS in our secondary, obviously as I said earlier, using PowerPoints um, and then through into live meetings in Teams. Obviously some of the people that are already using Teams will see that the difficulties are that you are only being able to see four uh, people on, on the screen at once if you're using your video cameras or if you're not, you can only see yourself in a very small box in the corner, which can be a little bit off-putting. We also have the difficulty of when we're in our lower school in the primary that we have a lot of chat goes on and we also have a lot of unmuting or muting of the presenter. 
which we were finding was getting a little bit difficult and um, not so easy to manage from the um, from the staff side. So we then developed uh, looked into going live on um, on Teams. So they have a live event function, which means that you can basically produce and present a lesson where there is no interference from your viewers or from your attendees. They will only ever see one screen, which will be whoever is presenting at that time. And then you, but you can also utilize PowerPoints, videos, music, um, and you can also incorporate having lots of different people from all over Dubai, all the world, getting involved with your lesson or presentation. So we've been doing our live events for the last three and a half weeks now. We had a bit of fun um, a few weeks ago for our house competition in secondary. So I'm just going to show you a 30 uh, second or uh, 40 second video of what we ended up doing, um, which was a bit of fun to encourage the students to still be part of our house challenge, uh, still being active, but also to see what we were doing as a PE team. So if you can, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to pop my video up. Uh, make sure I've got my sound included yet. So here we go. So we changed our students to a 14 kilometer distance. They could do it any way they wanted. Um, I'm lucky enough that I have a paddling pool in my back garden. Uh, we also had a team on bike. And then you'll also see we had one of our team on a rower. Now we were doing this within the same lessons. So we were jumping between the two of us and our presenter as well, back in the screen. So I'm just gonna stop sharing that. Okay, so that was that was the bit of fun that we had. Um, and we used it as a bit of a coming back to the studio, heading out to the different areas in Dubai. We've been doing the same thing this week, but with um, two or three of us co-presenting and uh, doing different types of lessons. So blending through um, our fitness with a little bit more of theory. Um, over to you, Ed, for your addition to live. Thanks, Becky. Um, brilliant and a, and a good uh, example there of how to try and engage students with physical activity. You know, you can do fitness all day long, but sometimes you have to do some quirky, fun things just to get them engage with that and then get them moving really. Um, so yeah, at NLCS, uh, we, we've also incorporated live lessons. We, we do pre-recorded lessons as well, like the others, um, but we've recently gone live. We started off with an assembly. Why we went live, um, inspired by a, a colleague at a neighboring school. Um, basically, the, the connection you have with students when you're live is, is so much more powerful in many ways because they're with you and and they go through that struggle with you you know you, you get it wrong you know my my burpees are very poor and you know my grade six boys find that hilarious so um you know and that's fine you go through that struggle with them um also you can reach more people in one go with with one broadcast one person um you could do it as a team like becky said as well we did an assembly three of us to the whole lower school grade two to five we had 200 people tuning in doing a you know a wake and shake and active assembly in the morning to start their day and, and that's brilliant as a PE teacher we got a real buzz out of that and you know we want to do it more so now we we do live sessions every day one till one thirty, and we just send the link to the whole school and we have senior students join junior school students join staff and um, parents mums and dads they're all joining as well uh, last week we had 175 and um, that was our first week um, with Ramadan that's having a little bit of, a, of an effect but we hope to grow that as the weeks go on. So yeah, if, if you are using Microsoft Teams, um, I'm just gonna show you very quickly um, how to go about this. And then after the, um, after the session, what we email out is uh, some more instructions. So you'll be familiar with the calendar function on Microsoft Teams. I'm a member of every primary school class, hence I get everything. Um, but up here in the top left, next to new meeting, you click the drop down and you have live events. When you click that, you can generate a, a live event. Um, you can give it a title, give it a name. You add your producer and different people. So you can have co-producers, presenters. 
And I've just made a little video, I'm, I'm not going to go through that now, of what it looks like when you are presenting. So this was our live workout today, I recorded today's workout. So I'm just going to play it um, and I'll speak over the top. So you, this is the producer view. So you can see here on the right, uh, my colleague Jamie, he's doing the workout. He's in the red box, the live box. I wasn't on screen, the kids can't see me, um, but I was just doing the workout with him because I'm going to be there, may as well exercise. Um, and then along the bottom, you have your um, other content that you can push through to that feed. So anything I want to go next in the queue. So on the left there, that's the queue. I can push that through and that comes in next. So you can have as many people as you want down here, as far as I know. Um, and it's a great way to, like I say, engage lots of people in one go. So that is why we went live and that is how you do it. Um, and I'll send more information afterwards and you can get in touch on Twitter as well. Um, so our next presenter is going to be Jay on the very exciting, and he's looking for people to compete with, but I'll not speak any more about that, virtual fixtures. Thanks, Ed. Um, yeah, so obviously when school's closed, one aspect of school life which we were missing, certainly in Dubai where we've got a, a large competitive programme, is the fixtures. Um, so we, we thought about how we can approach this and how we can offer some virtual fixtures which aren't FIFA and require some physical exertion. So I'm just going to share my screen and just show you how we tackled this. So first of all, I need to say thanks to Neil and Tom from Heartland School who provided our opposition for this fixture. And we used the app Home Court. So we've been using this in PE lessons. Um, if you've not tried this or you've not used it with your students, I do recommend giving it a go. It's free until the end of the month. Uh, hopefully they'll extend that uh, free subscription into June as well. So this Home Court app, uh, we had the kids download onto their iPad or their phone. Um, there's a number of activities on there and there's also activities that don't require um, equipment, which was quite important for us. We wanted to make sure the students that we pick can access it. Um, we actually chose to do the split jump reaction activity and I'll show you a short clip in a minute of how the fixture panned out. But first of all, just to go through the process, uh, this will let me uh, just bear with me okay so the process we went through obviously we had to find some opposition and as I say Heartland School were very very kind and eager to to step forward and and play us in this fixture uh, we actually selected our students based on their engagement levels in PE home learning so that was quite a good point for us to go to and recognize and reward students that have sent back videos of their workouts, challenge the teachers, etc. And with the hope of future fixtures, that will also um, help us increase engagement in, in the, the learning and the, the teaching that we're doing online. Um, we set up a Google Classroom. So we used that where the team could meet and we actually held a virtual training session. So all of our kids were online at the same time via Zoom. Um, and we provided some uh, activities that they could do in their own time to improve their agility and so on. And then the actual fixture, we set a day and a time. So instead of just saying you've got a week to submit your video, we opened up uh, a 12-hour window where the kids had to submit their entry. That gave them opportunity to train beforehand, but also kept it quite structured. So the kids knew that on the Thursday coming of that week, was when they had to submit their fixture. So obviously the kids being at home now, uh, structure like that is quite important. So we thought we'd just give them a set period of time to upload the video. Um, I will say uh, again, a big thanks to, to Neil at Heartland School who has managed to stitch the video together and I'll show you that, a, a short clip of that in a minute. Um, but the following week after that we you know, collected the videos in, we held a watch party uh, via Zoom where the kids were able to watch the videos of them playing against the kids from Heartland uh, to see the score. So what I'll do now, I'll just share you, uh, show you a short clip. Jay, you're not sharing your screen, I'm afraid. Sorry. Is that not coming up? There you go. Can you see it now, Ed? Yeah. Yes. 
right. So what you've got here is the clips on things on top and the clips on all the other one. Both completely the same activity at the same time. So you watch it with the pitch back. It's quite nice that they can see their score against the bottom. Can you say that again, Jake? You turn it down a touch. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me now? Oh yeah, that was very loud, yeah. thank you. So on the top here you've got the kids uh, from King's and on the bottom is the kids from Heartland School. Um, so this app is really good because what it does is it records the performance and you're able to download the video quite easily. Um, and then the kids were asked to submit that video via Google Classroom. We shared our videos with Heartland School and then they stitched this video together. I think Neil used an app called Filmora 9 which enables you to put a number of videos on the screen at the same time. Um, what we did is we stitched the year seven videos together and then obviously the year eight and year nine again as well. When we competed, we had a score for the year seven girls, year seven boys, year eight girls, year eight boys and so on. Um, what I would like to do, I'm just gonna stop that there, is I'm gonna share in the, the chat a Google form um, one of the reasons I'd like to do this webinar is to try and drum up some interest in virtual fixtures. We actually surveyed the students when this fixture was finished. Um, the 30 kids that took part from Kings are all very keen to do it again. Um, so I'm sure there's interest from other schools and other kids as well who would like to compete against other schools virtually. So what I'll do, I'll share in the chat a Google form. If you're interested, wherever you are, we'd like to have some international fixtures as well please fill that form in. Um, at the moment, while we are during Ramadan, we're not gonna put any extra provision out for our kids, obviously mindful for the kids who are fasting and so on. So this will be fixtures that take place if it involves Kings or Dubai schools, probably in June and after Eid. Um, but it would be great if schools can just fill that form in and we can get some interest and get some uh, communications going from there. Okay, thanks Ed. Thanks, Jay. Really exciting international fixtures and another excellent example of engaging kids in something other than just fitness. Um, a free app that has loads more stuff in there if you're a basketballer as well. Highly recommend it. Um, okay, next we are going over to Claire and Claire's going to talk about hosting the virtual Olympics at her school. Looks like Claire's frozen. So what we'll do is Matt, we'll jump to you and then hopefully Claire comes back in a moment. So Matt, if you can talk about uh, the MyMove app and then we'll come back to Claire next. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, just my internet went down just as I'm about to come on. <laughs> right, is it over to me Ed? Sorry, because I just lost everything. <laughs> yeah, go on Claire, we'll let you back in. Matt, sorry mate, thank you. <laughs> sorry Matt. <laughs> Okay, so I'm Claire Noland and I'm the curriculum leader for P at Gems Wellington International School. So um, today I'm going to talk you through a virtual Olympics which we um, set up at our school um, and this worked really well. So um, we actually got the, the idea from Hong Kong Academy where they had done um, a virtual sports day and we decided because the Olympics was cancelled this year that we would then base it on the Olympics. So I'm going to um, share my screen with you and I'm just going to run through how we actually organise this um, and set this up. Okay, so can you see um, the website? Is this okay? Yeah, yeah all good. Um, so, as you can see here, um, you basically, we, we ran this on Google. So you need to have somebody within your school who um, is really good at um, Google working behind the scenes if this is the method that you want to use. So we've actually got um, a G Suite coordinator at our school and he was amazing and he set up the background to this and um, working with our sports enrichment coordinator. Um, so as you can see, there's three layers to this website. 
So first of all, we have a um, with wellbeing um, section and that just goes through and this is kind of like a bolt on to the Olympics. So that just gives some ideas on what um, your students can be doing in terms of their fitness and their wellbeing and um, obviously to enhance their mental health through this period. And um, that is obviously voluntary um, and none of that went towards the Olympics itself. Then we have the home section. And this is where we've got links to our social media pages here and the hashtags which we used when we um, actually posted anything to do with this. Now, we put this out as um, a whole school community into house event and um, basically aimed from FS students all the way up to year 13. But we also wanted parents and staff to get involved in this as well. We actually ran it where we had um, this taking place within secondary PE lessons um, and we would go live to the students within that. But we had it for primary as a, an extracurricular setup so that then um, students could take part in that in their own time. So here on the website, you can see we've got a bit of an introduction to this. We've got an explanation um, as an intro video and that's Alistair Duncan who, um, like I said earlier, he did a lot of the work behind the scenes setting all of this up. We had a countdown, um, which was the countdown towards the, um, the start of the Olympics. And then we have here all of the results, which then um, explains how this then gets, when it gets submitted, how the points then get calculated. Um, we then have all videos from the PE staff, which show you how to do the different challenges, which we had set up on there. So you can see, for example, this one down here, this one was the video that I did, just keep bouncing. And that video just talks you through how to do it. Here we then came up with some targets. So the targets here were differentiated. So they um, were basically differentiated for the different phases in our school and also for the staff and the parents. Now, what happened is when um, somebody then would do that challenge, they had to submit their results via a Google form. So they would complete the Google form. Every single section had to be filled in. They would put how many they did and they would then put into there a link to where their video would sit. So for example, here, that would be my bouncing video. I would then just copy that link and then I would then paste that into that Google form. Then I would submit that form, okay? Once then I've submitted it, it would go into a database which would look like this. Now I've blanked out for safeguarding reasons and um, email addresses and names of our students, but this would show us, it was great for tracking obviously then the participation. And um, it's a good way of obviously looking at attainment in terms, of, in terms of obviously what then the students have achieved. Now we didn't physically check all of these videos. Um, Obviously, if a, if a video was really, if a result was really high, then we would go and check that video out. Um, really, the aim of the video was that students would obviously think that, um, but, but also for us to be able to then take um, clips of these videos and pop that on our social media so we could then be showcasing all what we were doing. And um, we would also um, link to our Instagram page, we would, we would have highlights of the results every day and we would then highlight lower and middle stars and upper stars within the school every day and we would also then show um, live results um, for that uh, as well, okay? Um, just one second there. So in terms of, uh, sorry, just a minute, let's try and get my... Uh, website back for you. In terms of the website itself, uh, we would have live results, uh, which we would uh, be, that would be seen to the, to the students all the time. So they could then track how their house was getting on. So this was live. So all of the way throughout this, we did this for two weeks. The students could see this changing all of the time okay and actually at the end of the competition it was so close with two minutes to go and the lead then changed diamond win the lead and they ended up drawing with ruby and um, 
So just before the end, we took this off um, because then we wanted to then keep it a secret, put a video together over the weekend and then have a big video to show who the winners were. And as you can see there, we've got graphs which showcases um, how all of the different events uh, the house has got on in the different events as well. Um, we had additional resources um, basically uh, which would go along with this um, and I've put a tutorial together which um, Eddie's going to share with you uh, which actually goes through um, it, it shows you a tracker which we used in and we use that within the, um, the lesson time um, and obviously then we could track progress and that would go into the Google Classroom as well um, and I say give yourselves a good couple of weeks to set this up because you need that time in terms of the background time but also putting letters together to communicate with parents and also um, putting together videos which show the parents how to use the Google Forms etc um, and that is the best advice I can um, give you. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen there and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Um, yeah, so like Claire said, she's done a, a 13, 14 minute video uh, tutorial on all of that. Um, if that was a little bit quick for you, they are time constrained, I'm afraid. Um, but yes, we'll send that out to you guys. It's going to be on the DXBPE YouTube channel. I think it's already there. And um, Claire, if you could post your Twitter handle in the chat as well. And then if anyone wants to reach out to you on Twitter, they, they can do. Um, right, Matt, are you ready? You were ready five minutes ago. So over to you, please, Matt. Thanks, Ed. As we've heard, everyone's working so hard to support students in these challenging times. The most important part is to get a picture of what their kids are actually doing. Because of that, we've been asked to share a platform that we've used for around a year, and we're one of the first girls in the world to use it. That's why the teacher in it is called Mr. Thomas, and um, we found it incredibly useful, and here it is. can help young people to flourish. But it's difficult to know how active each child is, if they're making progress, and most importantly, whether they're enjoying it. MyMove is a groundbreaking activity monitoring app for schools that allows teachers, parents, and coaches to support young people in making physical activity a regular part of their lives. It draws upon years of research into what makes children stay active. Mia's school use MyMove. Every day she uses the app to log her physical activity, including PE lessons, Sunday morning football, street dance and skateboarding. For each activity she records the duration, setting and how it made her feel. Over time this builds a picture of Mia's activity profile. Her PE teacher Mr Thomas can monitor Mia's data as well as the activity levels of other students in the school. This allows him to review the impact of the school's practice and provide targeted support where needed. Mr. Thomas can then use the data to support students and have conversations with the young people, parents and other teachers. Being you can watch the rest at your leisure at mymoveapp.com. To support schools during the pandemic, MyMove is free. A document will be sent out after this with more information. But if you'd like your students to join the 47,000 young people currently using the app in 110 schools around the world, simply go to mymoveapp.com and complete the Get Started form. Thank you and back to you, Ed. Thanks very much, Matt. Very slick. Um, yes, uh, the MyMove app, uh, the guy, um, I think Callum, asked the question early on that's had lots of votes about what's the best app to track student activity levels and things like you know, Strava, things like that. My move could be your answer. Um, one thing my move hasn't got quite yet is, is sort of, it's based on trust. You know, students could, could potentially lie about what they're doing, um, but you know, that's part of your school culture and how you, how you build that and how you promote that and how you reward people ultimately for their physical activity. But, if you implement it in your school, it's got lots and lots of benefits, but really have a good think about, about that if, if you want to go with my move. Um, we had a few questions after Jay's um, video on that video stitching, how to put multiple videos together. So Jay's just gonna say a few words about that before we move on. Yeah, I'm just gonna share my screen so you can see. Um, the app that we used for that particular fixture was called Filmora 9. So that enables you to put up to six videos on the same screen at the same time, which is if you're going to do a virtual fixture, that's quite important. 
Uh, another app which we've started using in our key department is Velo. So this is uh, a really easy to use app similar to Movie Maker. There is a small cost, I think it was around 30 dirhams for a lifetime subscription, but again, that allowed you to put two videos uh, simultaneously next to each other. So if you are looking to do fixtures uh, and you wanna go down the same road we went, I'd recommend uh, either of these. Thanks. Thanks, Jay. Uh, Matt, what was the app that you used to integrate your video into the corner of the Ready Player WSL? Um, so I used uh, Filmmaker Pro, and there is a feature on there called uh, Picture in Picture, and you can use a video or you can use an image to insert it in. Filmmaker Pro, thank you. Um, okay, guys, so we're all, almost at the end of all our presentations. I'm going to move on to Q&A soon. And there are 24 questions waiting to be answered. We won't be able to answer all of those. So please vote for the ones you want answering and we're just gonna to go to the top of that list and work our way down until we run out of time. So, um, but before we do that, um, I'm just gonna show you a few recommendations for sites and places for you to go for resources, for help, for sharing resources that you've got and just for general inspiration. Um, give me a moment. You see that guys? Give me a nod, thank you. Right, so the first website I'd like to recommend is PE for Learning. Now, PE for Learning um, has been around for quite a while. Um, they have a, a Google Drive that you can um, log into and it's all organized into different curriculums and uh, age ranges. Well, you know, these are resources other PE teachers have uploaded for free and you can download for free. Um, so this is a great place to go, PE for Learning. They also have a um, premium membership um, where you get higher quality support and, and resources. And they've kindly given us a, a discount code for 15% off if you use DXBPE15. All right, hopefully easy to remember. Um, but if you want to subscribe to that annual membership with PE for Learning, that's your discount code. Uh, the next is Share, Learn, Teach. Now, um, this is from uh, an excellent, uh, very passionate teacher, um, Josh Clayman, and Josh has set this up with a very similar ethos to DXBPE of, you know, he, he, sharing is caring is his sort of punchline. Um, so on this site, you pay a membership, but then um, you get rewards and points for sharing your content um, and then sharing others. So um, they've also got a teach me similar to this going at the moment and um, that you can watch for free at your leisure on the home page here via a YouTube link. Um, Josh has also given a 15% discount um, just using DXBPE as your code and their membership works out very, very cheap. So it's worth looking at. Um, finally, oh sorry, two more, um, the Everlearner. So if you teach GCSE or A-level or BTEC or academic PE, the Everlearner is something you definitely need to take a look at. Um, excellent sort of flip learning screencasting videos and um, but they also cover a range of subjects not just PE so have a look at the Everlearner that's free until September so perfect for online learning um, we've also got uh, this is uh, Johnny's site um, the PE tutor.com so Johnny does also lots of uh, GCSE and A level but you know he's um, Johnny do you, do you want to say anything on this Johnny while you're here rather than me Uh, yeah, so it's basically um, sort of a, a library for anything and everything you'll need to sort of deliver or set up, yeah, some home learning, flip learning stuff for um, accredited courses, so a bit of BTEC on there, uh, GCSE, A-level, yeah, just a, just a hub for hub for resource and videos, really, uh, so yeah, feel free to check it out. Thanks, Johnny, and then finally, before we go to the Q&A, um, the DXBPE page, so this, lots of you are asking, can we watch this back, is it being recorded? Yes, it's being recorded. Um, you can see there's other webinars here that have been uploaded that we've done over the past few weeks. Um, here's Claire's virtual Olympics video. Uh, so subscribe to this channel and you'll find all our webinars that we do and tutorial videos. If anybody's using Microsoft Teams, highly recommend particularly this one, DXBP uh, Microsoft Teams 101. Have a watch for that. Right. So we are now ready for the Q&A. So, uh, Let's have a look. Oh God, excuse me a second. Thank you for hanging around, guys. Uh, the Q&A is usually one of the most popular 
parts of the webinar. So going to the top of our list um, from Sam, Sam 31 votes here. Um, fitness has been the obvious go-to for all of us. Um, my question is, what are schools doing for coordination, object manipulation and sports specific skills? Um, we've touched on that perhaps. Any of the panelists would like to come forward and answer that? Lara's straight in. Go on then, Lara. Um, so what we did as, um, as a sort of department was we decided that various year groups would look at various different, um, different skills. So um, the FS teachers have been focusing on fundamental movement skills. Um, year three and four have just finished um, more sort of throwing and catching. I'm starting gymnastics with my year sixes this week. So um, feel free to go check out our YouTube pages because there'll be lots of different ideas. We have, myself and a colleague did, did spend some time doing fitness related things with year five and six. However, we are touching on various different areas of the curriculum because I assume um, just like yourself, um, our concern is that we don't want to do death by burpees and death by fitness. So we are trying to give a broad curriculum. Thanks, Lara. Yeah, completely agree. Check out the YouTube channels um, and you'll, you'll get some inspiration on there. Uh, Courtney, um, our school does not allow for live lessons um, due to safeguarding. What are your top tips for online learning when you cannot use these amazing platforms you have suggested? Tough question um, because we're all in a situation where we are allowed to deliver that. Has anybody got anything they'd like to say on that? No. Oh, go on then, Becky. Oh, I suppose, I suppose um, if, you, if you're not allowed to obviously teach the live lessons, things that we've been using are Kahoot's uh, Quizzy. Um, there are some from the other, the other, de the other um, webinars. There was quite a few options for different ways of getting that information. It's a little bit more theory based, but if you're not allowed to offer a live lesson per se, um, I, I, that, those would be the routes you're going to have to go down. Don't forget, if you do do a live event through Teams, the students can only see you. They can't see each other or interact with each other. You, you're the only person presenting. So um, there's the, that safeguarding side of things could be uh, your solution. Yeah, thank you. Um, next one. Uh, do all children have access to the internet in our schools? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, we're in Dubai. Many of our, we're all at schools that are uh, private schools, profit schools. Um, so lots of our children come from, um, you know, privileged backgrounds. Um, so they do all have access to the internet. Um, I know my brother teaches in the UK uh, at a school where that is not the case. Um, and again, they're using uh, web, uh, websites and things that, I suppose that's the internet. Um, they're, they're sending out resources and offering opportunities to kids. You know, they can come into school to collect these things. They're sending kids home with pieces of equipment and signing it out. So you can come and collect a football and take it home. And we know you've got that football. So they're opportunities to, um, to get around that. Um, anybody got anything to add? It's a tough one, really. No, sorry, we couldn't be more. Oh, go on then, Johnny. Thank you. Uh, yes, what I was going to uh, sort of say is I know of a couple of teachers as well, UK based where online learning isn't the isn't like 100% accessible so what I do know has been done is sort of like a calendar almost so you plan ahead sort of 30 40 days of almost like your lesson plan opposed to a lesson video but the lesson plan on there would have the instructions it would have I know we've just said moving away from you know death by fitness but that's just a good way to sort of exemplify it to have a list of fitness drills and then from a 30 day calendar, they can select one out of the 30 to then go away and pursue. And it might be that you know, they take a picture of themselves doing it or they note down on a training log what they've done. So then when school does resume again, they can bring in this calendar of activities or lessons that they've completed and they've got some form of evidence, but it does go back to that trusting that you were saying it, how it is, it is building that into the school culture and you can't always be checking if the student has done everything that you've set them but if you do keep it brief if you do keep it simple enough for them to be doing you know the bare minimum almost outside we can't expect to them to deliver their own perfect lessons from home without internet without a teacher so we almost have to set the bar a little bit lower of just doing enough that they could do by themselves so setting them a challenge of try and get to 20 key, uh, keepy uppies in the garden or try and get five alternate ball throws against the wall so that sort of builds into sort of key motor skills. It's a simple enough lesson activity that doesn't need video, 
So hopefully they can just pick and choose that suits their suits their schedule. But just an idea. Thanks, Johnny. Um, here's another one about uh, and Johnny's just touched on it there, and I know others have um, about knowing what students have produced, what they've done, what they've done independently. Um, I think it links in with the advantages of live. You know, you, you can. Um, if, if you're online with Microsoft Teams, for example, at the start of your lesson, you can do a live quiz or something that they answer it with you. Um, that's, that's really beneficial. Has anybody got any other ideas on how at their school they, you know, basically get evidence from students and um, check what they're doing? Thanks, Matt. Yeah, so with our year five cohort, we trialed the MyMove app. And in there, children can log their activity minutes, a picture, a thought, a feeling and uh, the type of activity that they did. From that, we collate it, and then we can use that within our uh, assessment data and our reviews of the year. Great, thank you. Um, social media from Adam, question here. Um, we, we target our parents through social media and our senior school students, as Adam's rightly said, you've got to be 13 or older to use Instagram. Um, but yeah, we, we use a lot of social media to, to promote what we're doing, um, the challenges and things like that. Instagram works really well. Um, twi Twitter's more for the parents, like you've said. Um, and we use, we have a school Facebook uh, page as well, which, which we post on. Um, so I think social media is definitely a part of this and an increasing engagement. Um, Christina, have you been tracking progress for each student and the quality? Just touched on that, I think. Oh, that's what we did. Callum, I hope we've answered your question on the best app. Uh, Doug, students to have cameras on or off? Um, oh, it's up to your school, really, and your senior, senior leadership. Uh, in my PE lessons, some of the boys have their camera on, some don't. Um, I don't press them either way, as long as they're talking and engaging and completing the activity. Um, anybody else would like to add to that? Do their school have a particular preference on cameras on or off? We, um, we don't, in secondary, we don't have them on because obviously we produce through the live events. So the only people that they can see is us. Um, so that's something that we haven't. Uh, smaller scale GCSE, um, BTEC, uh, IB, potentially there are some times where the, um, the cameras go on, uh, but it's very much a personal preference for the teacher on those smaller scale lessons. Brilliant. Um, just before we do the last couple of questions, I'm just going to post another poll here. And it's, it's an exit poll um, just to give your opinions on the webinar today um, just before you leave. So I'll just post that for you. Please complete that. It'd be very, very helpful for us. Um, Lara, question for you. Um, after they've watched your videos and done your lessons, how, you know, on the YouTube videos, how do students reply to you and your questions and the challenges you've set them? So the way that we do this, and I did see the question pop up, so I kind of got a little bit prepared in advance. So let me just share my screen with you. Oh, is it going to work? So um, the way that we um, set the, um, the activities is we do it through Seesaw. Um, so if I can just show you, for example, on one of my classes. So this is today's PE lesson. So that has great thumbnail there. <laughs> Today's PE lesson with my year sixes, they click on that and it takes them directly to the YouTube channel. In here as well as just like a couple of things. So um, year sixes are engaging through it with um, knowledge-based learning as well through Seneca. Um, and we've also got um, a challenge with our school at the moment where we're gonna try and get around the world before the summer holidays, um, either walking, jogging, running, skipping, whatever. So just a couple of links for them to also engage with um, on that. And then what we would do is, let me just find. So each, um, in each class, they all have different folders. So when we ask the students to upload some form of evidence, I always say to put it in the PE folder. Um, so the last, and then we always um, award a student from each class, um, well done on their engagement, like one top student. But then they would then post videos or um, for example, um, some students aren't comfortable in uploading videos, which is absolutely fine, but then this is where they answer the questions. So they would comment in reply to answering those questions, and we use Seesaw as our primary method of engagement. Excellent, thank you. Um, another great app is Flipgrid. Um, students can do uh, recordings and, and reflections and comments about the questions you post to them, and they can send them, they can put them onto the Flipgrid 
uh, .com page. I mean, it integrates very well into Microsoft Teams as well. Um, and you know, you can see that privately or the students can share it publicly with their friends. So I know lots of schools use Flipgrid at the moment. We're gonna do two more questions. Um, aside from students recording themselves and uploading to the platform, how do you ensure they're engaged in a live, sort of touched on that before, Hope you don't mind me moving on Jeremy. Um, question from Doug about Teams, uh, answered by Nicola I think, and Doug I'd highly recommend watching the Teams webinar on the DXPP page. Um, and Ryan, uh, what have departments set during Ramadan so far um, with students fasting? Um, in, in my lessons we're, we're offering alternatives so um, Many of the students are fasting and, and some are opting out, some want something less intense. I've actually shared re research and articles about how exercise is important for Muslims when fasting, um, the time of the day they do it, um, be just before breaking their fast or a couple hours after is, is advisable. Um, further reading and again, they're still expected to submit the same theory work as the other students. So initially we had some just completely opting out of the whole lesson. Um, and we said, no, no, you, you still expected to do this. So through Ramadan, they're, they're still learning the same as the other students. They're just not completing the high intensity exercise that we're asking others to do. Um, and, and that's fine. You know, we're, we're offering flexibility workouts and similar. Um, Jay, what are you doing for your students in King's um, fast, fasting students? Um, as normal, it's uh, their decision whether they take part or not. So we still put out the the lessons and the, and the videos and the, the live Zoom lessons, but it's it's the students' discretion if they take part or not. And that's kind of in line with what would happen if we were normally in school. The only difference is if they're in school, that they are requested to come to the lesson in PE kit. Um, but as as they're at home, it's it's their discretion. Brilliant. All right, everyone, um, that's an hour and five minutes. So we're gonna wrap it up there. Um, thank you, thank you so much for all attending. Um, first of all, what a testament. I think we had most 450 people in this webinar. Um, what a testament to our subject that is. Um, there's not many subjects doing that, I'm sure, at the moment. Um, this really reinforces my belief that PE teachers are highly driven professionals, always striving to improve. They've got that competitive nature, but very caring and wanting to do what's best for their students. Uh, my biggest thank you to our brilliant panelists today. Um, they've dedicated a huge amount of their time in just implementing their ideas in their own school and then more of their time to, to share it with you today. So thank you guys, thank you very, very much. Um, make sure you treat yourself this week to something special. I think Matt says he's bought some DJ equipment, so that could be a future webinar. Um, if you haven't done the poll yet, please do the poll. Um, I'll leave the webinar running for a few more moments to allow you to do that. Uh, thank you very, very much again. It'll all be on DXBP. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, guys, you can go. I'm going to stay here while people do the poll, but um, everyone else can, can sign off. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, Ed.